Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storybook Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to add a subject into one of our new digital backgrounds. The one we are working with is the Magical Pathway Digital Background 1. This is the original image, and I will be taking my subject out of this image and placing him into here. Now there are a million different ways to composite. Right or wrong, I am just going to show you what has personally worked for me, and it also helps that these backgrounds have a lot of texture and they're quite forgiving. But the most important thing with any composite is matching your light. You want to make sure that the light from the original image matches the direction of the light in the digital background. If the lighting on your subject does not match the background, then you're placing yourself up for a fail, guys. You, it's just not going to work out really well. For example, this image is backlit, so the sun is coming from behind. I chose an image where the sun is also coming from behind. You see this nice little glow back there. In the it's just going to match up with the digital background quite nicely. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is come over and take the quick selection tool. Now Photoshop has made it insane when it comes to masking, guys. There's so many different options, especially when you choose the select and mask. You even have hair refine and all of that. And I played around with them, but honestly what works for me is I just like to click, click the subject here. And then I kind of zoom in. And I just make sure that everything is selected. Like we got to get this finger here. And I'm just looking at like his clothing and his like shoes and um, his face and hair can be a hot mess. It's a hit or miss for me with that. Uh, I am not an expert, but this is just how I do things. So, okay, now that I have my selection, I'm going to hit Command Copy. So that's going to copy my selection, and I'm going to come over to the digital background, and I'm going to hit Command V. As you can see, this is a slop show right now, but we are going to make it look a lot better, I promise, guys. Okay, I'm going to go with Command T, and for this, you can move your subject all around, and you can resize them if you'd like. I'm going to just keep them as is with that sizing, and I'm going to plop them right here. The first thing I want to do is add a layer mask, because I am going to go and you know, remove some of the sloppy work that I did. So black um, on the foreground, I'm going to grab a brush and I want it pretty hard. I'm going to go up to like 64%, give or take. And then I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to mask off these areas. I'm going to try not to spend too much time. Um, you guys could take a little bit more time than I'm going to in this tutorial, but you get the point. When you make the um, edge a little bit sharper like I did, you're going to have cleaner, um, cleaner lines, if that makes sense. So it won't be like super fuzzy. You can make it even like a full 100%. And see, I'm not going to do it like this, but if I were to cut some of this shoe off, it's not fuzzy. It's like, it looks like it was made to be that way. Okay, I'm going to bring that shoe back. You can toggle back and forth by hitting the X key. The white will bring back whatever you mask off, and then the black will just like continue on your merry way masking. Okay, doing this really quick. Or at least I think it's quick. Hopefully it's uh, not too boring for y'all. So if it is, you can just go ahead and fast forward. I should look into like how to speed up certain areas. Maybe I will do that um, to not bore you guys. But yeah, you can fast forward if you don't want to see all this uh, masking. Okay, here we go. Just gonna come in here real quick and see because I have the harder brush. It's okay if I mask a little bit of his pants off. Okay. Here we go, and go along the edges there. And I just get rid of some of this hair we don't necessarily need. Okay, he's so cute. That smile just makes me so happy. Okay, and for the tutorial purposes, this looks good to me. So right now, he kind of just looks like he's um, floating and, ooh, 
excuse me, I had a burp, and he's a little bit too bright for this image. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab myself a curves layer. And then I'm going to hit this little downward arrow so it only affects my subject. And I'm going to just pull down on the midtones. And already that just like helps coordinate and match them up pretty nicely. Okay, now another thing I want to do is match a little bit of this glow coming from behind and put it over his face a little. So I'm going to go ahead and gr grab the Ultimate Light Pack, Sun number two. I'm going to set it to screen mode. And I'm going to just kind of match up that sun right there. But as you can see, it just kind of pulls too much attention away. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab a layer mask and I'm going to hit um, the, where, what is this? I'm kind of editing in the dark. The control. Okay. The control key. And I want to create a clipping layer. So it's only going to go on my subject, just like the clipping layer here. And then I'm going to turn it all the way down and just increase it a little bit to help blend him. And that looks good to me. That's the before and after. And now I want to just darken his clothing a little bit, maybe pull some more shadows into his face. So I'm going to come over to my actions. You don't need to use the actions here, but I just found it's made my life a lot easier and quicker. So I'm going to do the ultimate dodge and burn. I'm going to come into the clothing extra burn. I want to get my soft brush back. I'm going to make sure that I have the white on the foreground and I'm going to come into here and just paint it over my son here and a little bit in between his legs. There we go. And now I'm going to come into the burn, the skin and hair, and I want to just add some more shadows into here. And then I'm going to hit the, um, where is it, the white and get some of that off of the, or the black. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. And this is the dodge and burn. Made such a huge difference. And I'm just trying to match the shadows in my digital background a little bit as well. So the next thing I want to do is add a new layer. And this is where some like really, really great compositors are probably going to cringe when I do this, but uh, he looks like he's floating. And the way I personally like to fix this is I come into here and I like to squeeze my brush down to about here and you can re-angle it any which way. It also is good for masking if you want to really get into like any nooks and crannies or hair. Um, it's very helpful just shaping it differently. So I'm going to keep it like that. And this is the cringe part. Okay, guys, I'm going to turn this down to about 26 or, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. <laughs> I'm going to go there. It could even be like 13%. Sometimes I like to start even smaller. Okay. And I'm going to just come into here and I'm going to start coloring it on. I'm going to also go inside of his leg a little bit and I'm just going full force here go and as you can see the shadows are starting to match up nicely you can play with all the different blending modes um, some might encourage you to do so I leave it at normal oh so cringe guys I'm almost embarrassed but it works for me so I'm gonna come down here add a little bit under his shoe there and to me that lines up pretty good you can adjust the opacity to your liking I'm going to keep it at 100, guys. Okay, so there are my shadows. You can even take this if you want to pull it more um, all the way down if you'd like. Uh, I'm not going to do that there, so remove that and crank it up to 100 again. Looks like I missed a teeny bit right here. Just going to go in. Okay. So he's not floating anymore, and that works for me. It may not be the best route to do it, but whatever works for you, um, it works for me. Okay, so now what I want to do is flatten my image. And I love running the painterly. I feel like it really ties everything in together. So I made sure my background is flattened. Going to hit play. And then I'm going to, you can adjust it accordingly if you want. I'm going to keep it at about 60%. And 
And then I'm going to come back over to my soft brushes 100% and mask it off of my features. You can also mask it off any areas of the background that you want. I want that to kind of come back in. Oops, I want it on this close. There we go. Okay, and that just blends everything so nicely, guys. So that is where we finished, and that is the before. And also, oh, I should have done it um, on here, but you know what? I have one other. Because if also, if you want to like blend color toning more to the background image, um, I didn't need to do it there. I don't need to do it here either, but I did want to show you another example of someone standing. As you can see right now, she's floating. This is the digital background, the um, Magical Pathway 5. I added my subject in, but I wanted to show you how to add shadows to somebody standing. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my little brush that I made here. I'm going to take this down to about, I don't know, 14%, and I'm going to add um, the new layer, and I'm just going to get this under her feet, and I'm going to just tap it till I'm happy. And say that she had light coming from this way, you're going to want to add shadows like off to the side and vice versa. Right here it's kind of overcasty, but as you can see there's a lot of dodging and burning, and I want to make sure that it matches um, the background. So adding it into her feet, that looks good, and then I'm going to just expand it a little and pull it down. So that already looks better, and now I want to grab another curves, and I'm going to pull down the midtones a little bit, and then I want to invert it, so my layer mask will be clicked, command I to invert it, soft white brush, 100% opacity, and I'm going to come up here and just go all the way, oop, not, that's not a white brush guys, okay, white brush, and I'm going to darken this a little, and I also want to come up my subject and darken her back. So that's so much better. I'm going to add a little bit more shading here. Just a teeny bit more. And then you can also adjust this if it's like too much, come in on too strong and go that way. So let me group this together for y'all. That's floating subject, not floating subject. Very easy. Um, I feel like a lot of times People are scared of composites, uh, and it can be quite scary, but it's really not that hard or intimidating. Oh, what well, I wanted to show you. Her color toning is fine here, but say I wanted to match it um, to the background. It, if she doesn't like match or like you're going for cooler tones, but your, your subject was warm, just go ahead and hit the selection. I like to go into the neutrals and hit that, and then you can play around like say I wanted her more on the um, cyan side that blended her dress in even more. Um, say you want a green or whatever, it just works out. We'll keep the cyan because I think that looks nice. There we go. Or if you just wanted to blend all of it, like your subject and um, the background, you wanted to change it, stick with your neutral tones, at least that's what I do, and then you can just kind of play around and see the adjust. Oops! I went ahead and did the clipping mask. Okay, we're going to unclip that. And then you can just kind of play around with whatever you like. So that is it, guys. Thanks for bearing with me as I show you the nitty gritty of how I composite. Um, oh, shoot, I noticed that my screen was... Sorry if you guys got a little peekaboo of my background there. Um, <laughs> I didn't have it lined up or something happened between the filming. Anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and you can find everything I used here at www.storyvillephotography.com. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.